2 million of Michigan's more than 10 million residents live with some sort of disability, according to the CDC. And that can make civil duties like voting a lot more difficult. Here to talk more about that is Dessa Cosma, executive director of Detroit Disability Power. Dessa, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Thank you so much for having me. So this is one of those things where if you have a disability or a loved one who does, you are very aware of this issue. If you don't, you might be completely unaware. So can you start by kind of rating Metro Detroit when it comes to accessibility at the polls? Well, that's a really great question. And what we know from research that we've done and others around the country have done is that access to the polls is not nearly as good as it needs to be not only as it needs to be to follow the law, but to ensure that people with disabilities like myself can easily and comfortably vote uh, and, and exercise that civic duty that you're talking about. And so it's really important that we are able to show up to the polls and uh, participate in our democracy and make our voice heard through voting because we have a lot to gain um, by participating in our democratic process. Yeah, what are some of the main barriers that you guys have seen in your audits and research? Well, uh, we audit and um, we audit by going to polling locations across Detroit and Metro Detroit. And we look primarily in four categories. We look to make sure that there's accessible parking and an accessible path of travel from the parking lot to the building. We also look to make sure that the door of the building is accessible and operable by a person with a disability. Once we're inside, we look to make sure that the accessible voting machine, which in Michigan is called the voter assist terminal, we look to make sure that that is turned on, that it has all the equipment plugged in, that it's operable. And finally, we search uh, to ensure that there is a wheelchair height voting booth for those of us who use wheelchairs. Um, if you think about your average polling site, you can picture probably walking in uh, and walking up to a booth to stand and fill out your ballot. For those of us who use wheelchairs, we need something lower. So those are the four categories that we evaluate. Uh, and for a polling place to be considered fully accessible, it has to meet um, the legal requirements in all four of those categories. And what have your organization's audits found? I know you guys in 2022 uh, took a look at hundreds, almost 300 polling locations uh, across Metro Detroit. And, and what did you find? How frequently were these issues presented? Unfortunately, uh, in all of the cities that we audited, there were a lot of problems. And the problems were in all four of those categories. So we found that in the 15 cities that we audited in the general election of 2022, that only 16, one six, 16% 16 of poll sites that we went to were fully accessible. And this is um, not super surprising to those of us with disabilities who who know from getting through our daily life how inaccessible much of our local infrastructure is. Um, and it's also not surprising to those of us who are disabled voters who have encountered access barriers when going to the polls. And I have plenty of stories about that from my own self and from the members of Detroit Disability Power. So we weren't surprised, but it was really important for us to get very solid data so that we could then go to city clerks and other election officials and let them know exactly what we were seeing. We took it from being anecdotal to actually well-researched data that we could analyze and make recommendations based on. And that's exactly what we've been doing since we did that um, very large audit in 2022. Yeah, so let's talk about some of those recommendations. I mean, some of the solutions seem like they would be rather simple. An accessible lower voting booth seems like it shouldn't be that difficult. So what are the main recommendations to solve this? Well, I will say that none of the recommendations are rocket science and making polling sites accessible doesn't have to be difficult and it doesn't have to be expensive. Most of the problems that we found are things that can be easily remedied for zero or very little money. Uh, and most of the things we found can be remedied with some intentionality during the setup of the polling location. So of course, some of the problems that we found have to do with buildings that don't have elevators or ramps. That's a harder thing to fix, a more expensive thing to fix. But 
a lot of the recommendations we have are actually about making sure that staff sets up a wheelchair height voting booth, for example. Um, also, that staff is better trained on how to use and help voters use the voter assist terminal. And so these are things that don't cost money. Uh, these are things that are often game day decisions that just require somebody to have the uh, intentionality and the training to do the full scope of their job, which does include making sure that polls are accessible to people with disabilities. Uh, another thing that um, is very helpful that is a low cost solution to some of the problems we find is better signage. Oftentimes the accessible entrance is not the main entrance that other voters use. And so if you're someone like me in your wheelchair and you're searching around the outside of a building to find the correct door, a simple sign would make that much easier. Uh, and if someone is tired or someone doesn't have a lot of physical energy because of their disability, we may lose voters if they can't find the appropriate entrance and there's no sign to help them. And that's not what we want to do. So, um, you know, the things that make polls accessible to people with disabilities are not just convenience. They're not just nice to haves. They're absolutely uh, important so that we can participate in the democratic process, but they're also, le they're also legally required. So we're actually just helping um, election officials see where they are missing the mark so that they can do better and follow the law. Yeah, such important work you're doing. We thank you for that. Dessa Cosma from Detroit Disability Power, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you so much.